Hi, I am Giovanna Pereira, and this work is about giving an alternative approach to tackling two of the main bottlenecks in isogeny-based key compression, namely pairings and discrete logarithms. This is a joint work with Paulo Barreto. Okay, so let's start with some motivation and the background. It is well known that classical elliptic curves and pairings offer many opportunities to do research on different mathematical objects, from multi-precision arithmetic, the finite field arithmetic, and curve arithmetic. Now, isogenies uh, that are believed to be post-quantum secure uh, introduce the arithmetic of maps uh, between curves. And key compression takes it to another level. It also includes discrete logarithms over finite fields to be used constructively. And now in this work, we suggest to use discrete logarithms over elliptic curves. The techniques for key compression here not only applies uh, to keys, but also to uh, ciphertext. So it also applies to psych. And also, it's not only restricted to CANs, key encapsulation mechanisms, to, but also to isogeny-based signatures. So if you are uh, a big fan of elliptic curves and you want to, to research post-quantum cryptography and uh, you also want small keys, uh, Psyche is a good candidate for that. Now let's go through the necessary background for this work. We start by describing the usual SIDH Psyche setting where we define a prime P of the form 2 to the n times 3 to the n minus 1. And we build a quadratic extension uh, of the finite field fp by adjoining the imaginary number i. All the curves in this work will be super singular and usually represented in their Montgomery form unless stated or otherwise. And here ea um, denotes the, the curve in its Montgomery form and a is just the Montgomery coefficient. In the second round of the NIST competition, the psych team also suggested to use the curve E6 as the public initial curve shared among all the users. And they also defined two pairs of torsion generators, uh, denoted here P6 and Q6, where um, if L is equal to 2, they are going to generate the 2 to the n torsion, and if L is equal to 3, they are going to generate the 3 to the n torsion of the curve E6. And previously to E6, the curve E0 was the actual initial curve adopted in Psyc, but it was replaced in the second round of NIST because actually any two isogeny departing from E0 would pass through E6 anyways. So we wanted to avoid that. That is a very special property of the curve E0. Also, the curve E0 comes with uh, a pair of um, torsion generators, P0 and Q0, that we will make use in this work. And it has other special properties that I'm going to describe. So we know that uh, the curve E0 is connected to the curve 6 uh, via a 2 isogeny generated uh, by the point i uh, and 0. And uh, we also uh, denote by capital Phi the Frobenius endomorphism on E0. And by TR, the trace map that takes points uh, to the base field and is defined by the sum of the point, a point t to its Frobenius map. So we also have uh, a distortion map available on the curve E0 that is uh, usually hard to find on general elliptic curves, but uh, in here we can make use of it. For the purposes of this work, we are going to consider SIDH private keys as triples where as L is going to be an integer mod L to the E. Uh, we have also uh, an isogeny phi of degree lambda to the E to the lambda, whose kernel is generated by the point P6 plus SL Q6. And we also have access to its dual phi hat. And here, lambda is going to be co-prime to L. The public key in turn can be seen as a triple APQ. Uh, where uh, A is going to be the Montgomery coefficient of the image curve of phi E in here. And uh, P and Q are going to be two uh, points on E. Uh, that will be the image of the isogeny phi evaluated on the original torsion uh, basis P6 and Q6. So now we can move on to the ideas behind the SIDH key compression. So let E be the public key elliptic curve. Uh, it is always possible to build a canonical basis for the L to the E torsion here denoted by the points R and S that everyone agrees upon. 
And uh, because the privatized Ogeny phi preserves the linear independence of the points P6 and Q6, uh, the points uh, P and Q are also going to be uh, a basis for that same torsion. This means that um, a base change matrix should exist, and it's given by these uh, A's and B's coefficients here that are just small integers mod L to D. The first idea for key compression was given by Azadarash and others, where uh, instead of transmitting um, at the x coordinates of points P and Q to represent those points, uh, which have storage for log P, uh, we can actually transmit these four coefficients that uh, are the representation of P and Q in terms of that canonical basis, so everyone can recover P and Q. And these coefficients are just uh, half the bit length of uh, the prime P. So in total, only two log p would be transmitted. An improvement to this approach was given by Costello and others uh, that showed that only three coefficients need to be transmitted. The observation is that during the compression, uh, we have to compute a subgroup generated by the point p plus s l times q. Uh, and if you expand this out uh, in terms of r and s, you basically have, um, you can uh, multiply uh, this uh, point by the inverse of AP, if AP is invertible, mod L today. And this is still gives uh, an equivalent subgroup. So basically, you just need these three coefficients uh, with multiples of AP uh, inverse. And if AP is not invertible, uh, by construction, we will have that BP is going to be invertible because of this uh, base change matrix. So I haven't actually explained how to compute the four coefficients a's and b's. So for example, if you look at the structure of R, it is decomposed into two cyclic subgroups generated by p and q. And uh, if you want to retrieve, for example, the coefficient a p, you would have to uh, project R onto that subgroup generated by p, and use uh, Pulley-Hellman, for example, because this is a smooth order. Uh, subgroup. So, um, in the original works, the tool used to uh, decompose uh, R into these cyclic subgroups is the pairing. So, basically, we are going to uh, move these uh, discrete logarithm instances onto the cyclic subgroups over the quadratic extension of the uh, finite field. And here are the uh, five pairings suggested to do this computation. Uh, actually, the first one, the pairing G, which is the pairing between the points P and Q, can be pre-computed because we can uh, uh, work out the details and see that it only depends on public parameters. But the other four need, need to be computed uh, on demand. So once you have this uh, U's and V's, uh, basically, uh, these are going to be elements over the finite field, and then you can just used uh, pulley hellman to solve um, order L to the um, discrete logs over the finite field, and then retrieve the actual uh, four coefficients. We now review how to compute smooth order discrete logarithms over the finite field. We are giving a generator G of order L to the of the finite field, and a challenge of the from G to the D where the exponent d uh, is represented in base l, where the digits uh, are smaller numbers uh, mod l. So in the original uh, pulley hellman um, it was suggested to solve this problem by computing a sequence r0 up to r e minus 1, where you start r0 with the challenge, and then you start recovering the partial digits r uh, d0 up to dk up to d minus 1. Um, by uh, doing consecutive exponentiations by L and solving smaller uh, discrete logarithms, and then removing uh, the, the computed digits from the previous Rs to compute the next Rs. So, um, Zanon et al. in 2018 uh, showed how to reformulate this problem in terms of a graph, very similar to the um, strategy used to solve um, and compute a smooth order isogenous. So basically, uh, the root of the graph is going to be the challenge, and going to the left on the graph uh, means uh, raising to the power of L, 
and going to the right, going to a model, uh, removing a digit or multiplying by g to the minus l uh, to the j plus k times the digit to dk. So basically, uh, we can, um, using an optimal strategy to uh, traverse this graph and compute all the digits. And this was sort of uh, expected. Uh, it, was, it was mentioned by Victor Schupp a long time ago. Uh, that there would be there would exist a uh, optimal strategy strategy for this problem, but uh, no one had given a solution before. Zanon et al. also showed that if you use a windowed version of the discrete logarithm, meaning that uh, we work with base l to the w instead of l to represent the digits, we can do some nice pre-computation. So basically, we represent the digits in base uh, capital L, which is uh, l to the w for some w. And uh, the right traversals will correspond to uh, removing now large digits, mod L to the W. And the left traversals are going to correspond to uh, raising the element to the power of uh, capital L or L to the uh, W. So basically, we have a much smaller uh, graph. Um, basically, we have size E over W instead of E. But now going to the left is going to be more expensive uh, because now we are powering by L to the W. So basically to go to the bottom is going to, uh, when you go to the left is going to be the same cost as the original graph. On the other hand, going to the right uh, can be made cheaper if you pre-compute this uh, guy that is multiplied on the right here to remove the digits. So basically, uh, you can introduce this table to u dk uh, equal to those powers of g, and because g is public, you can uh, do this per computation. So basically, the right edge traversal is going to be a table lookup in one single multiplication. And in this case, the table size increases uh, exponentially in uh, l to the w, so in w, so uh, you can uh, not go uh, use a very large w, but uh, uh, even for small w's, you can do you can save some uh, some uh, multiplications. We can now move on to the contributions. So before going to the first optimization, I should mention that the previous windowed bully hellman technique works well when w divides the exponent e. It turns out that for psych p four three four and p seven five one. Uh, the exponent e is a prime number for the iteration, so no w is going to divide e. So Zanotto also suggested an approach to um, address this issue uh, by using an extra table of the same size of the previous table t. So uh, in their approach, let t be e mod w. It's what's going to happen is that if you uh, use it. Uh, the original uh, the description by raising uh, the elements to the power of L to the W when you go to the left. When you get to the first uh, leaf here, uh, you basically get an element of order L to the T instead of L to the W. So basically, we are going to be recovering less information about the digit. So what uh, Zenon et al. proposed was to uh, fix this uh, the order of the elements in, on the leaves by uh, <clears throat> In the first, uh, in the very first uh, left traversal from the rightmost diagonal, we are going to raise the elements by the power of L to the T instead of L to the W. And then after that, we just uh, go as usual. So basically, this is going to fix the order of the elements. And when they get to the leaves, we can still recover the full digits except to the, the rightmost one. And uh, for going to the right, uh, if you are at the rightmost diagonal, uh, you can uh, just proceed as usual by removing the digits using a table t. On the other hand, when uh, are below the uh, rightmost diagonal, uh, the digits will be shifted uh, by l to the t because of this uh, first exponentiation. So basically, uh, this table uh, is not exactly what you need. Uh, they suggested a shifted table that gives you the exact elements that you have to use to remove the digits. And uh, this new table has the same size of the previous one. So in order to reduce the storage requirements, we suggest the following approach. Let d, the discrete logarithm, be written as q times l to the a minus t plus r using the Euclidean division algorithm, where q is just a small number less than l to the t. 
So instead of computing the original log of the challenge in base G, we suggest to compute log of the challenge to the L to the T in base G to the L to the T. So now the exponent of the new challenge will be a multiple of W, and then we can recover the remainder R. So once we have the remainder R, we can note that the, uh, there is a relation between the challenge and uh, the uh, remainder R and the powers of G. And uh, the left hand side here, C times G to the minus R can be computed once you have R. And the right hand side, um, which involves uh, small powers of uh, G to the L minus T, uh, you can basically pre-compute. So this is uh, composed by public values and then you can create this table which we call it t small um, that has those powers and then it can just compare the table entries with this element to see uh, what's the correct value for q and uh, if you compare uh, this new table with the, the previous the shift the table uh, proposed by Sanon et al we can see that we can basically reduce uh, the entire table um, uh, can consume less than 1% of the size of the previous table. So one of the remarks is that uh, because we had uh, even the uh, the original table T uh, in addition to T shift, the overall um, reduction here is going to be a factor 2 uh, when you compare with uh, both tables T shift and T. And uh, this optimization uh, applies to discrete logs uh, over finite fields, so it applies to official psych, and it will also be used uh, when solving discrete logs over uh, elite curves. So we learned how to project the discrete logarithms of R and S with respect to P and Q by using uh, bilinear pairings and then solving discrete logarithms over finite fields. It turns out that there's a way to avoid uh, those pairings, and just solving discrete logarithms over uh, the base field uh, on the elite curve E0. So equation one is stated in terms of the elite curve E, which is the uh, image public curve. So it turns out that we can use the dual isogeny if we had um, and efficiently uh, move the problem back to the curve E6. So uh, this uh, isogeny if you had can be efficiently computed as described before by Nehig and Hennings. So once you have moved the problem to uh, E6, you can see that we still have the original coefficients that are preserved uh, by the homomorphism, so a property of the isogenies. And then once you are in, uh, on E6, you can uh, again uh, translate the problem to the curve E0 using that two isogeny uh, that connects them. So uh, basically, the key idea now is that we can uh, define an element G over the base field of order L to the N. And you know that the trace of a point uh, is always uh, on, the, on the base field of E0. So uh, we can apply independently the trace map and also the trace map composed with uh, the distortion map psi on E0 to get equations like this. Uh, we are going to apply this to the equation 2 here. And then we can see that uh, uh, the projection of the trace uh, on the point P0, Q0, R0, and S0 are going to be multiples of that same generator G. Now, by looking at the equations above, we can see that uh, recovering the discrete logarithms of the traces of the points P, Q, R, and S in base G we need to solve these eight discrete logarithms, uh, which are simpler uh, over the base field. And um, for example, the first four discrete logarithms all only involve um, public points, so they can be pre-computed. So basically the last four need to be uh, computed on demand. And these are all over the base field. And uh, once you have computed and recovered these uh, zetas and Cs, uh, you can basically uh, solve a linear system uh, of equations over the integers, model to the E, uh, to recover, for example, A, B, and B, P. You solve the system composed by equations three and five, and to recover A, Q, and B, Q, you solve the system composed by equations four and six. Um, 
by uh, removing the, the, the G in here and just working with integers. Now the instance of the discrete logarithms we have to solve are over the uh, initial curve E0 over FB. And the modeling to solve this uh, logarithm via pulley hellman is very similar to the finite field case, where you just start with the challenge as being the root of the tree, which is now is going to be a point uh, on the curve, written in additive notation here. And basically uh, going to the left, now instead of uh, raising to the power of L, you just multiply the point uh, by L. And uh, going to the right is just removing a digit by doing a point subtraction. And uh, we should note that uh, now uh, the sign of the point, um, the y coordinate of the point, will make a difference. So basically, we have to work with full projective co uh, coordinates. And we did some uh, investigation of different uh, curve models uh, to do this uh, multiplications by L to R3, uh, point doubling or tripling and uh, point subtraction when we found that for L equal to 3, uh, projective twisted Edwards model uh, uh, gives the best formulas and for L equal to 2, the inverted twisted Edwards uh, model will give the best formula for us. And uh, here uh, we should mention that uh, solving the small discrete logarithms at the leaves um, you can still use uh, tables uh, for computing those uh, multiples of the generator. But uh, the thing is that to compare with the table entries, uh, we still have to do uh, some extra field multiplications because we have projective points uh, as the leaves. So there's uh, some extra multiplications to be done. Another optimization that I call it two prime here regards the case where L is equal to two. It turns out that in this case, uh, reconstructing the original coefficients uh, is not trivial. So basically there is an issue when we try to move the problem from the curve E6 to the curve E0. Uh, because now the order of the points have, uh, are, is two to the M, which is not co-prime to the degree of the isogeny, which is two. So basically what can happen is that uh, the kernel generator of the isogeny, uh, phi2, may be a multiple of uh, any of these two points, R6 or S6. And in this case, uh, the resulting points, the image points R0 or uh, S0, is not going to be a full order point. So we may lose some information about the coefficients A's and B's. And uh, in the paper, we give two different approaches um, for this problem, which turned out to be non-trivial. And the first one is simpler, but uh, it has twice as starchy as the second one. And then the second one, which is uh, more elaborate, uh, we can uh, we were able to reduce this starchy requirement. So if you want to see all the tricks and ideas behind them, uh, you can have a look at the paper. Now we move on to the results and final remarks. So we have implemented our algorithms in Magma to validate our ideas. And for example, in the case of Psyche P751 and L equal to three, we have some storage figures uh, compared to previous works. So basically, if you look at the total storage size, we are improving by um, a ratio of 28% uh, or 20%, depending on the torsion we are working on. And um, in terms of uh, time performance, uh, when you look at the number of FP multiplications equivalent, um, basically um, our work uh, is faster if in the case where no pre-computation is used. It's about 24 to 48% faster depending on the torsion. Uh, but when pre-computation is used, uh, it's a bit slower. Um, because of the, the structure of the discrete logarithm over the elliptic curve. So in summary, we gave a new technique that improved memory requirements when solving discrete logarithms in base L to the W, where W does not divide the exponent. This applies to official psych and also for uh, the elliptic curve version of the uh, discrete logarithm. And we also proposed an alternative approach to map the discrete logarithms to elliptic curve discrete logarithms instead of using pairings. And uh, this new approach uh, provides improved storage uh, compared to previous techniques. 
and it is faster when uh, no pre-computation is used. Thank you for your attention.